Let's give my full body silicone doll Nyla a bath. Silicone is full waterproof, so you need to give these dolls a bath every now and then. And the reason you give them a bath is because they get very grimy and sticky over time. The oils in your fingers, like just the natural oils you produce, get all over these make them kind of sticky and then hairs, dust, small tiny pieces of fabric get stuck to them. So you want to give them a bath every couple of months. You want to make sure that you use lukewarm water that won't damage the silicone or the paint or any of the features. I think hot water could even cause the hair to fall out quicker. So Lukewarm water is the first thing that is key. The second thing that is vital is making sure that you use a bubble bath that doesn't have any scent. So fragrance freeze like this Arm & Hammer Essentials will work great. And I got this at the dollar store. And the third essential I like to have is a washcloth. Yes, this one is clean. However, eye makeup in the past has gotten on poor Ariel but it's still clean, <laughs> that's just stained. So you wanna make sure not to rub at the paint. You don't want any of the silicone skin to peel off or dent or anything. So you need to be very careful getting into the crevices, more so with your fingers and less so with the cloth because you don't wanna accidentally drag the cloth and damage the silicone or the paint or anything on the doll, of course. So I just kind of pat gently around all those little indentations and crevices that are on her, like the nostrils, under the eye bags. You know, the mouth is pretty clean in there, so I don't have to really get in there. Around the ears, fingertips are fine in there. So I can just kind of dab and make sure that the little hairs and pieces of fabric, like that right there, come off without scrubbing it. Then you can turn her over and get the little crevices, the realistic creases on her neck and back and make sure that she's extra clean because you're not gonna wanna have to do the bathing that often. Her hair tends to get matted in the back just because she's always laying with, you know, this up against fabrics that kind of cause friction. So you just want to make sure that when it's dry, you comb it. You don't want to comb it or brush it when it's wet because it will promote hair falling out in clumps. And obviously you want her to keep the nice hand-rooted hair for as long as possible, but just know every time it gets wet, the hair will shed some. So you might not want to shampoo the hair every time. You might want to try to keep her hair dry some of the times that you bathe her. So now that she's out of the bath, you want to make sure that she can air dry some as well as patting her. You once again don't want to be too abrasive and just want to kind of pat at the little creases and crevices which will hold water and try to have her air dry too as much as possible kind of out in the open for a little while just to make sure that by the time you powder her that you don't accidentally put powder on a part that's kind of wet because if you do that she could get mold or mildew. I've come to realize that the little toes hold water. If you look closely there in between each toe you can see it's glistening with water droplets. That's an area like between the hands as well that people tend to kind of forget and then those areas are not dry when they go to brush on the powder. And when you brush on the powder, the powder will trap and encapsulate the 
moisture and so then it will never dry and instead it will just mold or get mildewy. So that's just something to think about. So be extra sure that she's fully dry from hair down to the toe crevices before you apply the powdering. And for the second part of this video, I'll be going over how exactly I use powder after the bathing process is complete. But that's how I bathe the doll. So remember, lukewarm water, bubble bath that's fragrance free, a washcloth that you just pat along the body, then make sure she air dries super well. It's a lot of fun being able to bathe the doll, but it is pretty high maintenance as well. Is there anything that you do in the bathing process that I didn't mention? Comment below. I'd love to hear how your process works.